The Kenny Quest show was filmed live in front of a canned studio audience. Hey, Kenny. Hey, Maddie, what's up? Is that a Harley Davidson? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, Carl still hasn't cleaned our pool. Can I lay out by yours? I can't lay by a green pool. Yeah, sure. Thanks, that's where I'll be. Alrighty then. Welcome to my launch reaction video of Harley Davidson's 2023 120th anniversary year lineup. I'm Kenny Quest, and this is my neighbor Maddie, CEO Jochen Zeitz. This kicks off the launch video with the announcement of the 120th anniversary collection, which consists of select models from their cruiser and grand touring platforms. The Fat Boy 114, Heritage Classic 114, Street Glide Special. Ultra Limited, Rogue Glide Special, Tri Glide Ultra Limited, and a CVO Anniversary Model. Each features anniversary badging, plush seating, limited edition vehicle numeration. What stood out to me was the vibrant color chosen for the anniversary models. The heirloom red colorway accentuated with the plush seating accommodations in oxblood red trim on black coupled with the gold plated badging has the look and feel of the art deco period of the 1920s nodding to the opulence and luxury celebrated throughout that decade. With the exceptions of the street glide and the rogue glide specials these anniversary models are overwhelmingly treated with chromed out parts and the line appears to be targeted to the core demographic. The CVO model will cost you nearly $60,000 plus dealer fees, as these models will be in limited numbers. However, as we saw with the El Diablo, if sell-through isn't there by the end of the model year, dealers will relax these extra fees. I was keen to notice that the motor company is keeping up with their targeted demographics for this presentation. Although we've been told they are seeking new demographics to bring into the fold, it appears old stereotypes were in play. Women were shown riding smaller bikes, like the Nightster and the Heritage, an older man on the Fat Boy, a middle-aged man on the Street Glide and Road Glides, couples on the Ultra Classic, and a person of color for the specialty bike offerings. Wardrobe was promoted using a female with a male designer. I applauded them for the attempt at appearing all-inclusive for all social groups, qualified to afford their premium products. They were not all-inclusive, as I couldn't find a patched one percenter amongst the selected rider group. The only hog acknowledgement comes at the end of the video during a montage announcing the 120th anniversary celebration. I guess what I'm saying is, these people look different from the Harley owners I ride with and that I see in my area. But then again, we might be different down here in the Sunshine State. The motor company continues to expand and refine their trike offerings with the release of the updated freewheeler complete with blacked out engine compartment and classic chopper-esque bodywork on the tail section. But the big news in this category is the release of their first ever trike with a shark nose fairing. The all-new Road Glide 3. It's bold, big, and sure to be a bona fide hit for new riders that may have otherwise chosen a Polaris product if not for the release of this model. There's plenty of space for a big stereo. With the length of an old Cadillac, you get that cruising groove on down the boulevard. The Road Glide 3 trike starts at $32,995 is available in six colorways. I was pleased to see the next attempt at the Sportster replacement, the Nightster Special. It's really what they needed last year to launch the line, with its pillion accommodations, rugged good looks, accentuated with the split seven spoke wheels, denim colorway with AMF era inspired badging, the Nightster Special undoubtedly will be that category's sales leader. But at 15K, sell through will be aided by Harley Finance or dual income couples without kids to support. Next up is a model that has been in continuous production in areas outside North America for the last two years. But for this year, it's been equipped with a 117 cubic inch power plant and a plethora of chrome. 
It's the Breakout, a chopper-style cruiser that's unlike any other offering on the market today. It's HD's Honda Fury, but modernized. Those who like to rip it on a straight line, stoplight to stoplight, coffee shop to coffee shop, as much as they like to park and stare at the splendor of its design and have an extra 25K laying around, will be the ideal customer for the Breakout. The rest of us can pick up an early 2000s era big dog chopper with a RevTech 110 engine for 5K on Facebook Marketplace as a substitute. Though the breakout comes with selectable traction control and ABS as standard. Can't be too unwieldy with the burnouts on that 240 rear tire. My personal pick from this year's launch is the Fat Boy. The heirloom red and the chrome is just screaming take me home. The Fat Boy still isn't practical for my needs, but it's damn sexy. I'm glad Harley Davidson is sticking behind it prominently. And I'd be remiss to say that another year has come past and Harley still has not provided LED indicators on new model bikes. And they get the Kenny Quest, come on, man. Come on, man. Accessory wise, we were shown new rugged utility bags for grand touring models. So now you can get that rugged touring look without purchasing a Pan America. Tracker bars for the Nightster, as well as new foot controls, a low seat for the vertically challenged, and a windscreen. <laughs> Harley Davidson made an emphasis on their Empire collection. Originally released in mid 2020, it's a cool looking line that I guess isn't selling through as well as others like the Dominion series. So they thought a push and a nod is warranted for the Empire line. I was pleased to see them demonstrate the depth of the parts catalog on this road glide. With a competitive aftermarket landscape, Harley Davidson sometimes gets lost by the consumer who's outfitting their ride to third party brands and this presentation showed they have the hip parts to trick out your ride. Though if Harley-Davidson really wants to move accessories and bolt on parts with bike sales, they need to train their dealers, parts counter people on how to sell HD branded accessories at the time of bike purchase. High-end furniture stores employ interior designers to assist customers. Dealers need to either train salespeople or have a bike designer on staff to sit down with the client and map out a bike on a computer and design the accessories away from the parts counter where the phone is ringing and the line of customers with two quarts of oil to check out waiting behind a new customer trying to buy some parts from the parts counter guy. I feel that experience can be improved for the customer and Harley Davidson dealers and corporate can make out with better sell through on accessories. After accessories, CEO Jochen Zeitz pitched the 120th anniversary event happening this summer, featuring some name brand music acts, well suited for HD's predominant Gen X clientele. However, this wasn't going to be the case. In a potentially hacked Zoom conference call six months ago that we obtained, CEO Zeitz and the planning committee discussed other entertainment options. Let's take a look at this video obtained from the dark web. I have an exciting announcement. We have secured our headline entertainment for our 120 year anniversary event. I am pleased to announce that David Hasselhoff has agreed to perform along with opening act Pablo Cruz. Oh. Um, sir, may I? Yes, of course, go ahead. Between the reintroduction of the breakout and the announcement of David Hasselhoff as headliner of our anniversary event, I believe our core customers here in the United States may interpret this as favoring our Euro market customer base over the US. Agreed. Yes, good point. Do you have any suggestions? Foo Fighters. Social distortion. Brain Day. Okay. Very well. But we're keeping the breakout in the line. Yes. And the trikes. More trikes. Ah. More trikes. I want the road glide free. Much profit to be had. Oh. I think they made the right choice in selecting the Foo Fighters and Green Day, don't you? <laughs> Yoke and Zeitz closed out the launch video with a teaser for more new bikes released forthcoming during the year. We might even roll out another new bike or two. Our 120th year is going to be our biggest one yet. Perhaps we'll see the Pan American 975 or the Bronx. Plus, I'm sure an Icon model release is eminent, but who knows? Well, that's my take on the launch event. I'm Kenny Quest. Keep that shiny side up. Oh, hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you very much. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. And here's some other videos that you might like. Kenny, you ready to ride? Yeah, let's get out of here. Let's ride.